Hey everybody, it's checking my connection. Is it gonna work? <laughs> uh, let's see, let's see how technology works in our favor tonight. The internet has not been amazing. I turned off the Wi-Fi on the phone, done all the things. Hi, how are you? Um, so hopefully, hey, how you doing? Um, hopefully, uh, this isn't going to give me too much trouble tonight, but we will see. Um, hi, how you doing? Um, I'm just waiting for my guest, Quinn, to... There, hi, how are you? Um, uh, Quinn, go ahead and, and do the request to go live. Um, sometimes it works, the connection works better if, if you do the request and then I say yes to it as opposed to the other way. There we go. All right. Waiting. It's doing something. <laughs> How is everybody? It's Friday. I'm usually on here. If I'm on here, it's usually on a Thursday. I'm here on a Friday. What's everybody doing? Friday night. Saying hey. Hey, Edmund, how are you? L.I. is checking it out. Yeah, right. Um, I don't know. It says it's waiting for that. Let's see. See if the request went through in there, Quinn. If not, uh, I answered it. it. Did it say anything back to you? If not, I'll cancel it, and I'll try to send you a request. We'll work it out. Let's see what it's saying. It just says it's waiting. See if there's a request in there for you. Hmm. It's weird. It's saying it's unable to join, but I'm going to figure it out. Hold on. Hold on. Hey. Hi. It's good to see you. Um, see if that works. See if it sent you a request on my behalf. Hi, we did it. <laughs> Yay. Every time I have no idea what's going to happen with the with technology and the internet, but here we are. <laughs> I know. You never know. It's almost like a mystery sometimes. So right. we, we just work. With it. Exactly. I'm always just like, yeah, we'll just see what happens. I cross my fingers. <laughs> um, how are you this evening? Thank you so much for coming on and talking with us. I am wonderful. It's been a really busy week, but, you know, I'm happy that it's Friday and yep. that I'm having the last piece of my weekday thing with you. I'm so happy to be here. So how about you? How are you? Oh, good. I'll be like the, the cherry on the cake of, of the week. <laughs> um, hopefully it'll be great. Um, I'm doing pretty good. We had a crazy week as well. I, I feel like... Um, yeah, I feel like I just am like a freight train and then I just hit a wall and I'm just like, okay, I need to, I need to sit still for a second. So I, uh, I'm very happy to be capping off my week with you and uh, talking a little bit deeper about what you do and, um, and what you have started. So uh, if you want to take a second and introduce yourself and your pronouns and um, talk a little bit about what you do. Yeah. Well, hey, everybody. First of all, thank you for this opportunity for allowing me to come on here and just have a conversation with you and just for seeing me and noticing, you know, what's happening with my community work. Um, I'm Quinn, everybody. My pronouns are she, her, and hers. I have a nonprofit organization, which is LGBTQIA inclusive, geared towards creating awareness on domestic violence within the LGBTQIA plus community. Um, also helping people find resources that are relative to us and our struggles when you are a domestic uh, violence survivor. And I just use that platform to broaden my ability to be able to do more community service work that isn't all uh, rainbow work, but it's just community as a whole. So I, if I see a need that needs to be met, then I'm going to figure out a way to meet that need. So that's 
basically what happens with me and my organization and what I do and yeah yeah well i have many things i want to talk to you about after uh, yeah i have so cuz there's a lot of facets of this and 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 to what you do and you're also uh, a, an artist you're a spoken word artist yeah. um you're an advocate for creating uh creative spaces for all different types of artists to express themselves yeah. um you know all of these incredibly important things i i myself would art is like life i would not have i wouldn't survive without it i would not uh still be here at all <laughs> um so to me that it sort of ties into so many things and creative expression is so can be so healing um and it can be such a journey so i um i f actually first we'll talk let's talk about uh the charlotte uh black pride community outreach and then yeah. maybe we can go into talking a little bit more about your particular art that you do and sort of how those things uh work with each other absolutely so with Charlotte Black Pride, me being a community outreach director, basically um, that person who communicates with other organizers and other organizations and try to figure out how we can bridge the gap for, you know, LGBTQIA Black folks, you know, one part of my duty has been to curate basically like a questionnaire, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, at a lot of corporations do a Black Lives Matter pledge earlier this year. So it's basically like my responsibility to make sure that they're holding up on their end, mm -hmm. you know, representation matters. And then when you make a pledge and you agree to do something like that, we want to make sure that you're holding up to your end of the bargain without excuses because you promised that you will make sure that your workplace was a space that's safe for Black LGBTQIA folks. So that, that means a lot to me. And just also, you know, if someone want Charlotte Black Pride to be involved in something, I'm the person that they contact. You know, I'm like, I'm almost like the buffer and mm -hmm. I like the face. And yeah, I'm just the spoon in the gumbo, basically. <laughs> <laughs> and so, I mean, I can imagine that that particular job has, uh, you know, definitely has its its ups and downs because it deals with, you know, some some tricky subject matter and and i'm sure you know you run into a lot of things what's what would you say are are some some of the challenges of that but then also some of the things that you love that that keep you motivated to keep to keep up that type of work yeah absolutely so i will say that the challenges for me are one connecting with an organization that actually understands black folk issues mm -hmm. you know can you close the door? Um, so <laughs> my family lit the night. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, that that is hard because I know that, for example, you know, by being trans, say, uh, remember it, yeah. no matter what, as a cisgender woman, I can never understand everything that my trans siblings go through, you know, mm -hmm. but it's, I want to advocate for them. And I think some people want to advocate for us, but then they also have that fear of how will other organizations see us? Will, we, will it be too late? Yeah. You know, things mm -hmm. of that nature. And then another challenge is finding organizations that actually pour into the black community because, you know, generally speaking, companies and organizations have a tendency to want to connect because it makes them look good. Mm -hmm. Not, necessarily because they actually want to do the work yeah. and that can be kind of frustrating because now you have to sift through and make sure that you're making the right connections with the right people they are actually going to help us not just celebrate black lgbtqia folks once a year in pride but help us pour into the community all year round mm -hmm. so you know that last part is finding people and organizations who are willing to be a part of the community process and not just the celebration. Um, um, yeah. And the part is, guys, just being able to have a wide range of influence positively within the community. Like for me, that's 
somebody asked me what if you could say that you're, you have one superpower what would you say that your superpower is then i say community service being a servant being you know a giver and a carer and a lover of human beings and you know that's the best part of it and also being a black lesbian yourself <laughs> where you know sometimes people still look at you cross-eyed <laughs> <laughs> It's nice to be able to be that face that's in their face and saying, hey, guess what? I'm just as much of a human being as you are. And also, look at your children. Look at your family members that you as a black person, because within our black community, there are so many stigmas. You know, we, we scream Black Lives Matter until it's a trans person, until it's a black gay man. This is just the reality. So I like to be a positive example so that people who can't make that mental connect can at least the humanity and who we are as black lgbtqi folks so that's the best part about it yeah it's such a um it's such a weight to carry right there's such a responsibility level i i mean i i you know no comparison whatsoever with me uh but, you know, just I just feel it even slightly as like a trans masculine non binary person. I've, mm -hmm. I've, you know, there's like this pressure to like be the example because if you interact with people on the street, you want them to have a positive experience for everybody, you know? It's like, whoa. <laughs> it's just like, you know, it's, it's a, a lot. Scary. It is. It's that you have to be conscious of every little thing that you do. Even on social media, like I have Facebook, but I have less than 90 Facebook friends. Most of them are my family. And, you know, sometimes I like to cuss and go off and like, fuck is my favorite curse word. So, <laughs> you know, I can't just be out and about like throwing out F-bombs and, you know, just acting all out of sorts because they're going to associate that with, you know, my mission or with the organizations that I'm, you know, connected with. So it's that added pressure to uh what's the word kind of like filter through your own actions and who you are like it's not like you're not being your authentic self but you are kind of a rep a representation of the community not just yourself anymore you know and that is what makes it different that's what puts like a little dab of anxiety on top of that because you know it's not about me it's about us and yeah that, that's heavy and exhausting sometimes. I took a three hour nap today after I got off of work because I was two seconds away from the burnout today and that I needed that. So yeah, it can be heavy. It can. Yeah, it's 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 just an added uh, it's always an added layer, you know, that's always there. So and it never really <laughs> never goes away. So you're trying to do and accomplish and and just live your life in this other way as well. And then there's sort of this other there's this, you know, filter that's always on it. And, filter. you know, yeah. And I, I really, yeah, I mean, I really, I appreciate, uh, it's a lot of commitment. It actually is a lot of commitment. And I appreciate people, um, you know, especially when it's around their job and, and in service to their community, because it, you know, this is still, which just it all seems ridiculous to me that we're that like this is even what we're doing still like in this day and age just shocking to me always and and annoying that uh you know no matter how far we push you know everything like starting with you know women's rights it's like i i keep looking back and it's like it just you know none of these things it hasn't been that long and it's not long enough to take for granted, right? We have to keep continuously pushing forward with all of these initiatives. And it takes this level of commitment that is, you know, I feel like it's bigger than ourselves because we're here now in this world and we're trying to do something for future people. <laughs> it's future people that don't even exist yet, you know, trying to really, really push forward so that we can have this amazing world to give to them when they show up you know if possible <laughs> but it's you know when when people do that i mean i you know i definitely sort of live that and i i get to live that uh 
working for Play Out, which means a great deal to me. Um, but it is nice, you know, when you can have your your work life and the thing that is your life's work um, be sort of interconnected with that. Absolutely. And I, I just want to piggyback on something that you just said. You just said, uh, spoke about how our work is so much bigger than us and how we're preparing a future that's not even here yet. And I shared a video on my poetry page. It was a black woman. It was in the 60s. And they were marching and protesting, uh, marching basically to go register to vote. And she said in, in that video that if she had to die so that future generations can have the right to vote, it was not about her. You know, her mm -hmm. soul, it was not about I want to vote. It was, I know that there are people that are going to come after me, you know, that could possibly be seen in the same manner that I am. And I want them to have what they deserve and the rights that they deserve. And that's, that's what we're doing. It's, this year is almost like we've been fighting, like a fought hasn't been fought before. It has been so intense. And yeah, yeah. And that, that's a big portion of it is what, what we do is definitely for who's coming after us. We are building a, a, a stronger foundation, I feel, you know, for them. Yeah, I, I feel like uh, the, you know, there are a lot of younger kids, the, you know, the more and more younger people I talk to, the, the you know, the, the kids that are like teenagers now and tweens, um, they're not having it. You know, like there's, they're, they're not having it. They're, they're looking at this just being like, uh, -uh I'm, I'm not going to do this. And I, I hold a lot of hope in that because I, you know, I see the way that they're interacting with each other and sure there's people still on either extreme because it's about your upbringing and, and yeah. how you're raised. And, and, you know, if you don't know anything else and you've, you've been groomed to be a certain type of person and, and engage in, in hate and bigotry, that's, you know, you're going to have to get a little bit older and see more of the world and realize, you know, why that is, is not, should not be uh, the viewpoint. But um, I feel like there's stuff coming. I feel like there's good, I mean, I think, you know, this has really come to a boil. And I think the biggest difference is that I think there are a lot of people who you know, obviously I didn't think of themselves as racist or didn't think of themselves as, as, uh, you know, they, they uh, considered themselves, if you ask them on the spot, am I an ally or not? They'd say, yeah, of course, I don't have any problem with anybody. And now it's not good enough. Like you can't just not have a problem with something. You need to actively fight racism and you need to actively fight bigotry. And I think that a lot of people are realizing, oh, it's not, it's, there is no, neutral territory now it's not good nope. enough no nope. not good enough people yeah. die because of neutrality you know yeah. people die because of you know compliance you feel like you just are staying neutral or you're staying out of it or you're saying uh you don't want to be political but taking making the choice to not be political is a political choice yeah and, and people fail to realize that when they say things like that so it it, it goes it goes to show the level of just general ignorance that people are comfortable with having. Yeah. And, and like you said, things are coming to a boil. Our younger generation, they're not, they're not putting up with it. And I've actually seen videos of some of them correcting their parents, you know? Uh, and it, it, it breaks my heart and warms my heart at the same time. Yeah. Because it's fortunate that a child has to explain to their parents why they should actually be an active participant in what's going on with black and lgbtqia people uh it, it it is mind blowing and like you said they they just are not having it either. they aren't having it yeah it's it's funny that you said that that it, you find that heartwarming and because i do too i have this mixed emotion when i see stuff like that because you know it's 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 just uh you know, it's heartbreaking that it has to, that that even has to occur. But then I get so excited when I, when I 
will see these kids just go head to head and speaking from knowledge and from their point of view and that they clearly believe this and they're like no you're this is you're not seeing this what about this what about this what about this and really challenging because that's what that's what you know that's what i have to do like every every it's you know it's my job to sit there and say okay i i that's your viewpoint what about this what about this not just letting it ride and be like well that's what he thinks you know i'm not because i'm i'm not it's just it's not it's not good enough <laughs> you just you have to keep pushing you gotta keep pushing um so inside of inside of uh what you're doing for your job i mean i think that this this aspect of you as an individual and as an artist um you know, I, I love, I love poetry. My business partner uh, is a, a writer and loves, loves poetry. I myself am a painter. That's my thing, uh, my medium <laughs> that I express myself in. Um, but I absolutely, I absolutely love spoken word. Um, talk to me a little bit about what started you doing that and how long you've been doing it for and sort of, um, you know, what that has done to um, either help in in your survival and and sort of helping you get through that and get to the place where you are and where you can help others. Um, and I mean, it, that has to be like an amazing journey. It has been a, a, an amazing journey. So I actually started writing when I was nine years old. I started writing haikus about nature um, because I'm a flower child. <laughs> And uh, that was my thing. I would go sit outside and, uh, in the backyard where we lived at the time. There was a cherry tree. And I would sit out there and pick the little cherries and eat them and write down my haikus and take them in the house and read them to my mom about the wind and the, and the, and the leaves. And all oh, those. I love that. <laughs> and as I got older, I would say, like, leading towards my late teens. In high school, I wrote a lot about heartache, pain, and not being accepted because that's what I went through. You know, uh, poetry is always a, a pour out of what's inside. And then as I got older, I started to write more about Black rights and being a Black woman and things of that nature because in 18, 19, 20, you actually start to see how crappy people are towards Black people. As a Black woman, you start to experience the things that you saw on TV. And that was a big part of my expression for that and I, some years later, I, I kind of paused on writing. So I had a lot of things in between, a lot of mental health things going on. And, and then some years later, I met my now ex. And when we were together, I kind of wasn't allowed to do anything. Uh, wasn't allowed to wear lipstick. I wasn't allowed to look at a man. I wasn't allowed to look at a woman that was masculine presenting or anybody that was masculine presenting. Like there were rules in how I had to stand, be, talk, act. And being, I'm a very sexual and sensual person. I, by nature, I am. I'm silly, I'm goofy, and I love intimacy. It's, it's a deep part of who I am. And so once I left her and then I started my organization, and I realized that there was a part of me that I needed to unearth. The sensual and sexual part of me, I lost that. You know, I, I had this thing at first when I got out of the relationship with her, I used to say, my cootie broken. <laughs> I, couldn't, <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't even have an intimate moment with myself. And that's, that's what made me start to dig and reach and become more intimate with myself, become more sensual with myself and love myself in a way that I know, right? Somebody's laughing. It's true. That's, that was my thing. It was, I just knew it was broken. And <laughs> once I started writing my poetry, somebody encouraged me to actually share it. And I started going to open mic night and people learned about my organization. And that's what made them make the connect. And so I love you. And, <laughs> and so 
that part of me, my erotic or sensual poetry is like my freedom thing. Mm -hmm. And people know that, you know, and Minx is, is my stage name. That's my poetry name for those who don't know. Okay. <laughs> Um, <laughs> uh, that like level of freedom just it helps me grow and it gave me a voice to a different people you know people who are in the kink community and things of that nature saw that not only am I a sensual or erotic poet but I also am a poet who speak about the mistreatment of human beings. I'm also a poet who reminds Black women that we're magical. I'm also a poet who reminds everybody of things that we just generally need to be reminded of. So I'm a multi-faceted artist. And that just opened the door for me to then start my podcast and create that space because I earned people's trust. And trust means so much in the community, just all over. You know, if people can't trust you or what you're doing, they're not, they're going to have a disconnect with you whenever you reach out and say hey i'm doing this can you help or do you want to join me you know whatever and to me my podcast and the reach that i've gained with especially black lgbtqia folks in that space has been amazing to see other black people say hey you know even during this election time because usually i try to i don't stay neutral but i try to just stay out of the fire the crossfire yeah and this time i completely dove into it and you know i had people tell me thank you you know i had people say you know what i am gonna vote you know I'm, i don't care if i gotta post strippers on this sexy page and you know freaking marching bands on this page somebody is gonna get it so it just really expanded how I can connect with people and with, you know, cisgender black men, because a lot of them don't vote. And, you know, they look at my boobs and like my big juicy lips. And they're like, mm, whatever she's saying, I think I'm going to do that. So. <laughs> whatever works, though. Whatever gets people to vote. <laughs> whatever, whatever gets people to vote. Whatever gets people to be more loving of other human beings because everybody understands that all my spaces are safe spaces for all people and if i catch you slipping we're gonna have a problem so <laughs> don't don't make me curse um, <laughs> so yeah that's like that's my healing space that's my fun space that's a space where i can be as nasty as i want to be or not you know and people just kind of say hey this is who she is but also let's hear what she has to say. Mm -hmm. And that is, has been so healing for me because all the things that I couldn't do, you know, I was called a, a, a hoe and all kinds of derogatory, you know, names with my ex because I am a very sensual and sexual person. Although I'm not like, I'm not like that with everybody. I'm selective. My body is my temple. And so being able to get into that part of me when I spent six years not even being able to wear lipstick, not even be, being able to write poetry that I felt like I could truly relate to that was really part of me. It was like, geez, it was like just taking it all off. It was like marrying myself again. It was like connecting to the universe again. And it gave me so much more confidence and I started to see myself in a light that I hadn't seen myself in before as a creator. And what I would say now, I guess, an influencer of change and positivity. So that's what that kind of all means to me. And I feel like it's definitely bridged the gap between, you know, creatives in the non-LGBTQIA community and the ones in the LGBTQIA community because I see where they're supporting each other, where they're liking each other's posts, where they're saying, oh, I listened to the podcast and I heard such and such and they were amazing. And it don't have nothing to do with nothing other than humanity. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the best part right there. It's just, I see you as a person and I see what you're doing and it's amazing. I'm going to acknowledge it and we're going to figure out a way to grow together, to support each other. You know, I'm super big on supporting businesses, partnering, whatever the case may be. I'm like, how can... 
how can I pour into you? I don't even want nothing in return. I don't really charge anybody anything. I'm just here to give people space to express themselves. So. Which is amazing because sometimes all people need is permission. You know, like sometimes it's it's that simple. They they you know, it's the representation and permission, because if somebody walks into that room, maybe they weren't even expecting it. Maybe they you know, maybe somebody took them along and said, oh, just come with me to this. And, you know, it might it might be that person that's sitting in that room yeah. that that experience changes their life because they're like, wait a minute, wait a minute. You know, I. I see myself in this person and I see my, I hear myself in the words that this person is saying and it gets them connected to themselves. And that connection, you know, once you, once you make that connection, it's, you know, the seed is planted. Somebody may avoid it. They may be like, no, you know, but it's there, you know? And then it's like, it's, it, it starts chipping away because, you know, everybody, all anybody wants, I think ultimately is, to be seen and accepted for who they are and loved for that and have a space, um, have spaces to just be themselves. Like that's, that's, that's all. I think that, you know, I feel like at the core of everybody, no matter what they say on the outside, you know what I mean? I obviously this, you know, all of patriarchy is it, and, and the, misogyny and the policing of sexuality is for control and power and to manipulate and force people to to uh do what someone else would like them to do and you know it takes so much away from people okay. it ta- it strips so much away from people it, you know it, we're such multifaceted beings there's so many layers to all, and all of them can exist at the same time. They don't contradict each other. They're all there, you know? That's what makes everybody interesting. <laughs> exactly. I, I mean, just, gosh. I sit and think sometimes, and for example, my dad, he is a preacher you know, and he sings the gospel and all that kind of stuff. But he also does interior decorating and he cooks food. And I heard at one point in his life, he was a little gangster, you know, so. <laughs> <laughs> like, we don't have the best relationship. We don't, we don't have the worst. I feel like we have a working relationship. And I think him getting more involved into his creative side outside of Christianity and gospel music and like doing things such as going to Atlanta and being in a space where it was a bunch of black gay men who were pet stylists. And, and, and he was just, he was kind of amazed at what he saw at the humanity that he saw in them. And he fights it sometimes, but it's still there. It's that, that little thing that, you know, he said to me one day, it was when I was with my ex, and I, I think he kind of knew I was being abused. And he was like, you know, all I really care about is that you're with somebody that makes you happy and feel safe. Yeah. And, you know, it showed me that no matter how different he felt like I was or how he felt about who I am as an individual, he made a connection to that. And it's like you said, it's all about just finding that, that connection, that human connection and you know wherever you plant a seed and little rain comes here and there eventually you gonna get some water even if a plant is dead okay if it dies in the winter you take that same plant you sit outside in the spring put some water and guess what happens leaves grow <laughs> you know so it's all about planting those seeds and just unity that's my favorite thing yeah i i um, I feel like, uh, you know, self-expression can look like so many different things and, and, you know, it's so personal to everybody. Um, but you know, I, I hear people, sometimes people say to me because I'm, because I'm a painter and I'm a designer and I do creative stuff, they'll be like, you know, 
oh, I don't have a creative bone in my body or I don't have, you know, I don't do this or I don't do that. And I'm, and I'm always like, yeah, I don't actually believe you. I, I <laughs> might not look like what I'm doing. It might be totally different. It might, it might be words. It might be sound. It might be, it might be some other medium. Right. But everyone has that way that they express themselves. That's personal just to them. You know, yeah. it's just about it's like tapping into it and finding what it is that really, really like, you know, gets you motivated and where you feel like you can pour yourself into it. And I, I kind of defy anybody who says that, that it's possible to have a life where you, you know, you might suppress it as hard as you can. And, and you might have been taught to, to not listen to that, but it's in there. If you go looking for it and you, you give it some space, it's going to come to the surface. <laughs> Absolutely. And I'm, I'm, hey, let's bring it all to the surface. I'm like, whatever. You know, I've actually had people who messaged me when I first started my podcast and they were like, well, I don't really have any, you know, sexy or sensual poetry. And I was like, mm, have you ever been through something in life and made it through? Yes, that's sexy. You know, have you, you know, grown in a space where you felt small? That's sexy. That's it isn't about sex. And I think people feel like just because it's sex, they as associate everything with actual physical sex, but not sexuality, you know, and it doesn't have to be sex to be sensual, to be beautiful and things of that nature. Like I feel like a strong human being that's just being themselves and being free and comfortable in their skin. To me, that's, that's sexy. So I'm like, blow me away with your whatever it is sexy okay. <laughs> <laughs> and you know after that I started receiving poems from people that were pro-black poems or poems where they felt ostracized you know in their community because they were black lesbian or whatever the case may be and I'm like this is some sexy shit and I go and I'm like on my podcast and I'm reading and I'm like yeah I'm reading about sexy and stuff and it's about, you know what, I'm sick of this shit that's happening right now. <laughs> but it's still sexy. Like, on top of it, all people hear what you're saying, but you can feed a different part of them that needs to be nurtured. And I feel like that part of us needs to be nurtured. It needs to be cared for. It's just as much of an intricate part of who we are. It needs to be healthy, you know, and it doesn't have to necessarily mean, like, physical sex. And being able to help people understand that I feel like has helped them tap into some of their creative sides as well because now they don't feel like they got to be, you don't have to be me, be you, do what you can do, do what's good for you. Like you said, tap in to yourself and figure out what it is. If it's something that you like, that just, that, if, if it keeps like nudging at you, that's your thing, you know? Yeah. If every day you want to go on a walk in the trail, take your shoes off and squish your feet in the mud, that says something. You know what I mean? Then maybe you should look to vibration and the healing of the earth. You know, a lot of times, because I feel like, you know, religion can be so binding, people look at that and they're scared to, you know, veer off and expand and get in touch with their spiritual side. And I feel like it's, it's been a roadblock for some people. And, you know, I say to anybody, whatever that thing is that, that keeps calling you, do it. If it's porn, do that too. You know, do whatever liberates you. But do it well. Be smart about it and make sure that you're loving yourself while you're doing it. Yeah, I mean, I, I always come back to, you know, I, honestly, if we, if we weren't supposed to be like sensual and sexual and caring and intimate creatures, we wouldn't have been built that way. <laughs> Like it's so part of our makeup and what makes us a whole person. It wouldn't be that, right? Like it just wouldn't be part of the makeup if, yeah. if it wasn't supposed to be there. It just, it just wouldn't happen. And, you know, I feel that way about so many things because people always try to talk about how they feel as though things are unnatural and things of that nature. And, you know, I like, I love science. Okay, I'm kind of a, a science nerd a little bit. <laughs> and, you know, I like to always take people back to things in nature. I, I like to remind them that butterflies can, uh, you know, form out, come out and form to be two genders at, at the same time. And actually the male part of the butterfly is the 
bigger side of it and the female is usually the smaller side and they can actually have two different patterns be one butterfly you know there's an actual fish that when when it's born it's female it grows and becomes a male and has to fight the male that with all the other fish to mate with one female and then make more babies and then it dies and then guess what that young female grows up and becomes a whole man and now it's her job to re <laughs> repopulate that community of nature so everything is so fluid how can you deny yourself anything yeah i mean it's it's the the construct of of the social binary and just how people are supposed to be is always just so uh interesting to me because it's if you really look back in it just in if just throughout history uh first of all, this is all really new compared to, you know, how long I've um, been on this earth. And in, a, in addition to that, it's really all been around power. Like it's all been about power and control. And, you know, how, how better do you control people than by having them, you know, f fear and shaming. <laughs> that's, that's the fastest way, you know, and it's just, it, to me, it just seems so counterintuitive, you know, it's, it's, it's totally counterintuitive. Like the, the, it, there's a lot of power in it too. And that's why people get afraid, you know, like your most power when you're in your power as a person, it's like all of these components are there. They're all present and you can have access to all of them and they make you this extra amazing, super strong version of yourself, you know? Um, and that's what gets people afraid, you know? Yeah. Let's say it, it's it's crazy to me and i and you know my brain just is always the opposite it's like yeah do that because that's amazing you know <laughs> <laughs> i'm there with you on that i'm definitely like i tell my friends and i tell anybody i'm the best hype man i don't care what anybody say like, whatever it is i'm always like hell yeah do that hey, like i'm that person whatever it is i'm behind you like what do you need how can i help you do this thing that you're trying to do because just like just do it i mean i feel like you only have one time that you'll live at least in this body and so while you're here making your imprint make that make it big and make it deep in the earth you know make it real deep and so yeah I like to take things that people feel are taboo or that they're just downright afraid of. And I feel like it's because they, they know that they'll like it. I feel like a lot of times with people, to be honest, I feel like a lot of times is something that a person is intrigued by, but they're scared that they're intrigued by it. I had a coworker that I found out that, um, asked one of my friends how could she listen to my poetry because it's so sexual which also lets me know that she hasn't listened to any of my other poetry so that means you only been listening to my you only watch my sexual poems on <laughs> so what what does that say because i got pro-black poems on there I, i've posted poems about black girl magic i've posted all kinds of stuff about self-love everything and so that just goes to show like where you where you at <laughs> you that's your problem that's not my stuff that's your stuff you need to do with your stuff honey so whatever deep deeply embedded desires that you may have tackle them but understand i can't help you tackle them <laughs> but don't sit up there and criticize other people for doing their passion or something that they love or something that you feel like is taboo because deep down inside you haven't dealt with yourself deal with yourself people need to deal with themselves yeah and it's funny too that a lot of times you'll see that like i just see it naturally the 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 topic that is that person's like trigger point you know is the one that they'll gravitate towards and and they become fixated on that one it's like well there's a whole bunch of other stuff going on they're like but this and this and this you know and even if they're on it in a negative way i'm like you are way too against that. You're so against that that I'm pretty sure that's about you. <laughs> like, like that is you, and you just don't want to know that that is you. <laughs> like, because you, you can't be that mad at it if you, for no reason. <laughs> how can you be? Okay, so this is the thing. So, okay, okay. 
So you can choose to follow people, right? That's a choice. Mm -hmm. No one can make you follow them, right? So you actually go, you click the button, the button says follow, and you follow them, right? Okay, that's how IG works. All right. And so once you follow me, you saw that, oh, you are just so taken back by my sexy nastiness. Then you could have, like, went to that same button, you know, that you hit follow. <laughs> And then hit unfollow, you know what I'm saying? And so, like, I was just trying to figure out why, even when I made my page private, how were you still here? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Because they're like, I can't turn them, I don't want to see this. It's true. I'm going to keep looking. <laughs> Let me just press play like five more times. Let me just do, let me just let me do that. Let me just walk past you at work and passively put my tits on your back and say, "Say it in your mean voice." And then when you're not around, say, "That's too sexual." I can't. I cannot. True story. True story. <laughs> uh, oh my gosh. <laughs> I totally get it. It's like when when people fight it that hard or they, they you know, there's always like the, you know, they'll say like out of one side of their mouth, they're like, Ugh, and then all of a sudden it's just like, it just always cracks me up because I, I'm just like, yeah, whatever, you, none of this is about me. So I'm just going to not take any of it personally and let you go through your thing because this is 100% about you. <laughs> So yeah, so yeah, yeah. I just had to get that off my chest. <laughs> it was, it was a little deep right here, but now that it's off, okay. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> oh my god, I love it. <laughs> it's so true, though. It's so true. Just saying, follow, unfollow. Follow and follow people. It's so easy to do. Like, literally, it takes less than five seconds. So, hey, if you happen to be uncomfortable about something in your feed, you have the power. If you didn't know, let me educate you. You can go to that person's page. On the left-hand side, there's a blue button. And it says, follow. If you're not following, unfollowing if you want to unfollow. So, yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I was seeing on here... Um... DJ Nikki, that it's true that, and I believe that most of the time, like the people who, who are the most panicked and and terrified by uh, trans folks, it's it, you know, there's something really, it, it generally is a reflection of something that they have not faced about themselves, uh, you know, it, it it's it's, I I mean. I don't know, I have lots of feelings about uh, Mike Pence, but one of them is I'm just like, I know some stuff about you that you don't know about you, but I know it that, about you. Just saying. <laughs> like, just saying. That part, because <laughs> he's so obsessed, like, you know, like Mariah Carey said, why are you so obsessed with me? So yeah, yeah, people should definitely check themselves and just kind of leave other human beings, just leave them the hell alone and kind of mind your business, you know, drink your water, mind your business. If no one's actually doing something that affects you directly, continue to mind your business. Yeah, I mean, that's it, you know, I feel like it's really, uh, I feel like the... <laughs> <laughs> I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I feel like the 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 interesting thing about this last year and and this um, administration is that like it's really been put to everybody as a challenge to up your humanity. Like we lost our humanity. As, as as a country and we had a leader who gave people permission to hate and um, and it's not that those people weren't there they've always been there but they mm. now they, they got permission to come out of the woodwork and really go go to town and you know 
that it, it, it's, it's a travesty, but it is one of those things where I think it really has pushed everybody to step up on their humanity, just in general, just general kindness, general, you know, looking at other people as, as people who have rights and who need to be treated with as much care as anybody else. And really just on a base level being like, no, I need to think about this differently. Cause it might've been something that before people could just choose to not think about at all because it wasn't being challenged overtly. Right now, there is no not thinking about it. There is no space where you're going to get away with just not thinking about it at all. It's not. If you're awake right now, you better be being challenged to think about this and, and where you are and want to be inside of all of it, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, um, one fact that I learned was that, I want to say, I want to say it correctly, but I can't remember. I want to say it was one was it one in every three or one in every five? It was a very, it was a number that was too much, but, uh, you know, trans youth, you know, are more likely to commit suicide because, you know, they don't have that backing, that humanity backing. And, you know, I have just, Probably every other day that I've posted something, I've said, be a better, be a better person, be a better human. And even for me, you know, I want to be a better human. I have went out of my way to try to understand what's happening and to educate myself what's actually been happening with our family members. And I was just taken, taken back at the astronomical number of trans people that were murdered worldwide this year, 350 people counted. Imagine how many people were not counted, were not claimed, or were misgendered. Yeah. And, you know, I, I feel like that's a sure sign with everything that's been going on that we, as the human race, need to do so much better because it's nothing that makes me sadder than fearing that the people that I love the most can walk out of the house and just for no reason because somebody is angry about who they are inside take their life that is scary you know and so I have and I do all that I can to share positive beautiful images of human beings <laughs> because the world needs more of that. And, you know, if you don't take anything from anything, just even if you can't understand or completely mentally relate to a person or their life journey or their trans journey or whatever journey that they're on, remember that moment when you went somewhere and you felt uncomfortable or you mm -hmm. felt unsafe or you felt outnumbered or you felt out of place or you felt like all the eyes were on you and your body got hot with anxiety. You know, that is what our trans community, that is what people who feel unseen or what have you go through every single day. And if you can't relate to that, even if you some big corporate kahuna, you know, Mr. You know, tall, dark and handsome with your suit and tie and everything. Remember that first moment when you had to go in for that interview for that big position and you thought you just might not get it because somebody was better or that they wouldn't see your worth. You know, it's time for us as human beings to see each other's worth and not judge each other's worth on the stupid shit that we have in our minds about ourselves. Because what you got going on with you ain't got nothing to do with nobody else. Check yourself. Yep. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Oh. I yeah I'm I I feel like um we're gonna get kicked off of here in a little bit but I would love to have you come back uh anytime and I uh want to uh before we jump off of here I want to um make sure I give you a second to promote promote where people can find you and your podcast and all of the amazing things that you're working on 
Yes, absolutely. So you can find my nonprofit page. It is Quinnos LGBTQ. That's Quinn with one N on Instagram. And you can find my poetry page. It is She's Mink, M-I-N-X. No spaces, no underscores. And on that page, you'll find like uh, my podcast and all that stuff, which is Wordgasms podcast. That's Wordgasms, like orgasms, but with words, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I love when I saw that name when I was like I was like oh I like this yes. <laughs> I mean you know, it came to me at about 3 a.m uh, <laughs> um yes and uh, my podcast can be found on anchor where got some podcast essential poetry pro cannabis you know because nobody should be in jail for weed so the the logo was actually my lips with you know my ah. mouth Okay. I, I I took a picture of my list and I was like, mm. and I said to my friend, and I was like, this is this is my vision, and she's the same person that actually created the logo for my nonprofit, which was just an art piece that she that she drew out of love for me to promote my business, and I adopted it as my uh, logo, and so yeah, yeah, and if you want to find like, I have private pages, don't find me there. A private page, I ain't gonna accept you, but I do got a public one, and it's, <laughs> and it's, <laughs> it's hey friend, it's Quinn. So you can find me. It's, it's it's a link somewhere in each one of my pages to where you can find me, and you can also find the website to my nonprofit and learn more about what I do in the community. Uh, Quinnos LGBTQ dot org. That's Quinn with one N knows because I know some things LGBTQ because I'm down for the folks. Amazing. Uh, yeah, I, um, I'll also put um, those into the description when I put this on to our IG live because we have lots of people who, who uh, do watch these after we've uh, posted them. Um, so everybody can find you. And I'm just so this was like the best way to end this week. This was the best way. I agree. <laughs> I absolutely agree. I'm so happy I got to just see your beautiful smile. You have lit up my evening. You know, now I can go and do all my little fun things and make me feel relaxed. What? Get up out of this. Honey, I'm about to. <laughs> I got to come up out of this. Do you hear me? I'm like, look, let me tell you, I'm about 10 seconds away from it. I'm like, let me just start early, okay? Do it. <laughs> Woo. Do it. Yes. And I look forward to us uh you know chatting. Anytime you want, just let me know. I'm so down. Um anything you need, anytime y'all have like new things going on, I'll be happy to share, promote, whatever. Just let me know. I I'm not asking for nothing. I'm just here for you all. I appreciate what y'all do for the community and just how you just make people feel comfortable to just be themselves. And that's why I started following play out a long time ago. Cause I was like, look at those real ass bodies. I was like, I got to say I am rose too. They say, <laughs> so, I love it. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. I appreciate you more than, you know, thank oh, you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And um, yeah, thank you for, for continuing to bring art into this world and touching people and, and, you know, I think that it is the thing in the end that's going to save us, you know, it, creativity and, and authenticity, like, it's how you can't get it any better than that. Absolutely. Thank you, love. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thank you. <laughs>